high resolution graphics, up to a massive 48K of RAM, sound and full 8 color capability, all available from £125. I give you the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. The ZX Spectrum is dead, long live the ZX Spectrum. Today, retro gaming ZX Spectrum fans expect bigger, better and faster games. Despite the onslaught of Sony, Nintendo and Microsoft, the retro gaming market, although niche, is worth millions. Home computing really began way back in February of 1980 with the launch of Sir Clive's Sinclair ZX80 which found its way into the home under the guise of an electronic hobbyist project in a kit form for just £79.95. This meant the world's first sub £100 computer. The Sinclair ZX80 had 1K of RAM, no graphics or sound, but just came with a rudimentary Sinclair basic programming language. But it captured the public and the public's imagination. Before being replaced by the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, the ZX81 sold 450,000 units. Now with a phenomenal and loyal user base, the original ZX Spectrum found its way into over 5 million homes. Today, with the rebirth of many iterations of the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, it is estimated that hundreds of thousands still enjoy the ZX Spectrum via emulation or original hardware. Unless a purist, gone are the days of tape loading error. Is that you, Dad? Or is someone loading a game on a ZX Spectrum? Ex-programmers and modern-day ZX Spectrum enthusiasts have developed incredible ways to save memory, from self-erasing code to cramming code into areas of memory that were never meant to be used. Today's programmers are taking the ZX Spectrum way beyond its original limits. ZX Spectrum games today are still selling in vast quantities. Anybody remember waiting 10 minutes for a game to load? Only to see the computer crash in the dying moments? Sitting there typing out hundreds if not thousands of lines of code only to knock the RAM pack and surprise surprise, the computer crashed. You always had it in the back of your mind that no matter what you were doing, at any time the computer could just power down. But mother of God, the games. Jetpack, Jet Set Willy, Manic Miner, School Days, Chase HQ, R-Type, Renegade, Bubble Bobble, Head Over Heels and a slew of others. Almost everyone I knew had a tape to tape recording system at home where games were transferred to a C60 or C90 cassette, ideally a TDK model, and then exchanged around schoolyards throughout the country. This underbelly of piracy became a competition for kids everywhere. C90s were handed around like confetti, collecting larger quantities and better games. We're now at the point of the video that you've all been waiting for. What are the six most important ZX Spectrum games? But more importantly, why? Well, let's find out. The game that pushes the ZX Spectrum further than it's ever been pushed before. Fight your way through several time zones to reach the ultimate confrontation with the god Dameron. The game is captivating not only because of its size and depth, but also because of the superbly animated sprites and sheer playability. Crash went on to award this one 96% and they said great on brawn, great on brain, great on graphics. A winner. I think it's safe to say R-Type led the field. And it's one of those games you still want to play after years, not weeks. You know you can play today's games and they're good, they look amazing, but they're not great. We know what great looks like, we know what great is. I tried to talk to my wife about uh, R-Type and why it's great and her eyes just glazed over and she died. It makes the list because of its exciting gameplay and unique approach to the genre. In 1984, Night Law didn't just look stupendous, it was groundbreaking for the time. Whilst Ant Attack set a high benchmark with its groundbreaking 3D, only a year later, Night Law had obliterated the mould. 
In fact, you can't talk about the ZX Spectrum without talking about Night Law within the same breath. Night Law is no victim of style over substance. And despite the 3D visuals getting all the attention, the actual game isn't half bad either. This one is the real deal, and based on the cult classic Miami Vice. It uh, all adds up to a fun game, very much in the outrun mold. That said, however, Chase HQ did feel cutting edge back in the day. It righted the wrongs of Outrun, and it's also a game that is remembered fondly, not only on the ZX Spectrum, but on the arcade as well. Jetpack is largely responsible for those who didn't own a ZX Spectrum to then go on and beg their parents for a ZX Spectrum for Christmas. Jetpack is a fairly mindless 2D blasterthon, and to think that Ultimate Play the Game, Jetpack was their first release and it really set the gold standard. It felt like the closest you could get to having the arcade in your home. The real star of the show though, are the enemy sprites.
The ZX Spectrum is a history of breaking boundaries. The second people believed that those boundaries had been reached, they were breached again. Among the talented few pushing the capabilities of the humble ZX Spectrum, with its primitive single channel sound and absence of sprite graphics, was the legend Matthew Smith. What's new here is that the player was free to wonder, a first for platform adventure games. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It would be great if you could leave a comment. And until next time, bye!